Welcome. This video is going to talk about covalent bonds and uh, contrast them to ionic bonds. And it's another chemical bond. So covalent bonds are defined as a chemical bond that involves the sharing of pairs of electrons. So remember with ionic bonds, one atom is going to lose electrons, another atom is going to gain them. So it's an actual transfer of electrons and it ends up in one atom uh, picking up a positive charge as it loses electrons and the other atom picking up a negative charge as it gains electrons. But with covalent bonds, co like, you know, from cooperation, that prefix means um, togetherness, you know, cohesive. So covalent bond means you're, ch you're uh, sharing those valence electrons. And so two nonmetal atoms will tend to share one or more electrons to form a molecule. It's going to be between nonmetals because nonmetals are looking to gain. So if both atoms need to gain electrons, then by sharing them, both atoms can get what they need. It can form between like atoms, like oxygen, hydrogen, and iodine all combine with themselves to form O2, H2, and I2. That's how they tend to be in their pure form. And it can also be between different atoms, like H2O or H2SO4. And if the electrons are shared between different elements, then the sharing will never be totally equal. There's always going to be one atom that's stronger or more electronegative, and it will tend to pull the electrons more strongly to its side, and the electrons will tend to hang out by that atom more of the time. So covalent bonds, the other thing you need to know about covalent bonds, two terms that you should um, get straight in your head are bonding pairs and lone pairs. Bonding pairs or shared pairs are just what it sounds like. It's the pair of electrons that are bonding or being shared between the two atoms. Lone pairs are any unshared pair of electrons around each atom. So shared electrons or bonding pairs belong to both atoms. Both nuclei are attracting them and hanging on to them, keeping the two atoms physically close together. And so it counts toward the total of each atom's eight electrons. And all atoms between elements 6 and 92 are going to be most stable with four pairs of electrons, or that total of eight. Remember, eight is great. And it doesn't matter if they're shared pairs or lone pairs, but other than the noble gases, no elements naturally have four lone pairs or eight electrons. So most atoms are going to have to have at least one shared pair and maybe two or three shared pairs. So Lewis structures is a way to represent the molecules and the covalent bonds holding them together. And what we do with the Lewis structure is we adapt the electron dot diagrams that we've learned to do. And now we designate which pairs of electrons are lone pairs and which ones are bonding pairs. Now lone pairs are always shown with a pair of dots, one for each electron. We don't have to use the arrow showing one up and one down. We're just going to put dots and assume that we know that there's going to be one of each spin. And then the bonding pair can either be shown as a pair of dots between the atoms sharing it, or I like to use a solid line between the atoms. And I think of a solid line as, remember, a solid line has to connect at least two dots, two points. So I think of it as connecting the two electrons to each other. And then I, I can clearly see which ones are my lone pairs and which ones are my bonding pairs. So here's an example. Um, I apologize, this isn't quite as clear as I'd like it to be, but... On the top there you see fluorine and you find it over in family 7A and it's got seven valence electrons. So each fluorine atom needs to gain one electron to be stable. So if it were going to bond with a metal, it could pick up that electron from a metal because it's got a high electronegativity. But if one fluorine atom uh, donates an electron to the other fluorine atom, that's great for the fluorine atom that ends up with eight electrons. But it's not so great for the other fluorine atom because now it's even less stable because now it only has six electrons. So electron transfer isn't going to work between two fluorine atoms. But what will work is if the two atoms move close enough, as you can see in the bottom diagram, so that those two uh, lone electrons, the two unpaired electrons, one on each fluorine, now share an orbital or space. So you're going to move close enough. Oops, let me get my pen here move close enough together that these two dots become this space right here and that now becomes my bonding pair and what's going to hold that atom together is the positive charge in each nucleus is going to attract that uh, bonding pair of electrons and physically hold those atoms close to each other. So we're not going to draw quite as complicated a diagram 
But the way we're going to draw Lewis structures, if we have H2O, you have to look at what you're starting with. You're starting with hydrogen with one valence electron, and in fact you have two of them, and you could draw it twice or just remember there's two of them. Get a single dot there. And then you have oxygen, which has six valence electrons. So we draw it like this. Remember, all four sides get a single electron, and then you start pairing up. And so if this was an ionic bond, I could see that one hydrogen would donate here and one hydrogen would donate there. But hydrogen doesn't give up its electron. It's only got the one. So it needs to share or gain one in order to become stable. So instead, what's going to happen is this pair is going to share and this pair is going to share. So I'm going to redraw this and show that there's a shared pair between hydrogen and oxygen, shared pair between the other hydrogen and oxygen, and that leaves the two lone pair around oxygen. So now when I count up electrons, hydrogen has just two electrons, but remember two will do for element five and smaller, and oxygen now has four pairs around it, or a total of eight electrons. So Again, my Lewis structure for water would be each hydrogen bonded and then the two lone pair around the oxygen for a total of eight. So here's a couple for you to try, Ni3 and C2H6. And just a quick hint as far as drawing this, the first element is typically what we call your center atom. Now, if the first element happens to be hydrogen, hydrogen can't be in the center because it can only form one bond. So if you only have one bond, that doesn't make you the center. That makes you the end. So anything other than hydrogen as the first letter, that's what you should put in the center and then attach the other atoms to it. And molecules try and form as symmetrical or balanced as possible because that takes the least amount of energy. So Ni3... If I look at N, it has five valence electrons when I see it over in group 5A or 15. And then my three iodine each have seven valence electrons. And so if I look at nitrogen, it looks like this. And then iodine has its seven valence electrons. I'm trying to make those dots big enough so you can see it. So here would be a bonding pair. My second iodine would do the same thing. There would be a bond here. Now if you decide to connect those dots, make sure it's obvious they're connected because I don't want the pair of dots and the line. Otherwise, I've suddenly got extra electrons. So that would be Ni3. Make sure I connect those there. And then C2H6, I've got the carbons with four electrons each. So when you think about carbon, that means there's an open spot on all four sides. I've got six hydrogen with just one each. So it's like, well, I've got eight spots on the carbon, but only six hydrogens to fill in. But remember, the two carbons are going to have to connect together. So C2 lets me know that's the center atom. Well, because there's two center atoms, I have to connect them right away in order for them to be one molecule. And then I've got three other bonds that can form on each carbon. And I have six hydrogens, each with an electron to share. So C2H6 would look like so. Now another option to talk about is something called a multiple covalent bond. And it occurs when two or three pairs of electrons are shared between two atoms instead of just one pair. Sometimes more than one pair needs to be shared in order to get things stable. Um, however, atoms won't share four pairs. Even though carbon has four lone electrons, you won't see a quadruple bond because physically it just can't work. You can't overlap it that closely without the nuclei being right on top of each other. And because the nuclei are both positively charged, they're going to repel or push away. So it takes more energy than it's worth to try and form a quadruple bond. But a double bond is when two pairs are shared. A triple bond is when three pairs are shared. And there's always what we call one sigma covalent bond. And then when the second covalent bond forms, it'll either be what we call, it, it will be a pi bond. So 
We'll come back to sigma and pi bonds a little bit later in this chapter, but for now, let's look at how covalent, multiple covalent bonds form. So O2, remember, I've got oxygen with six valence electrons. So I've got two unpaired electrons needing to form a bond. So what happens is I've got my neighboring oxygen. So it makes sense that these two could share and these two could share. Now, you're not going to have one really short bond and one really long bond. What's going to happen is these two oxygen are going to rotate. So it's more uh, precise or more accurate to draw it with the double bond between them, showing that all four electrons will be centered between the two atoms. And then I'll still have the two lone pair. And I try and draw these somewhat symmetrical. These bonds are going to, these pairs of electrons are going to spread themselves out as evenly as they can, which is something else we'll talk about a little later in this chapter as we get to shape. So here's a couple examples. I'd encourage you to pause and try on your own. And I'll go ahead and put in my solutions. So again, I have carbon. I know it has to bond to itself. I know it still has three more places it needs to share electrons. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw it as a line instead of a dot so I know that it's looking for something. And when I do that, I only have four hydrogens. So now when I look at it, I'm like, well, it should be H6, but it's not. C2H4 is something different. So what this has to be instead is I need a double bond between those Cs because then four hydrogens are enough to make this atom stable. And with C2H2, now when I get done, I need two more for each carbon. So that leads me to put a triple bond between with each hydrogen single bonded to it. So that's a beginning look at multiple bonds.